Hello, dear Earthlings. We have not been in touch with you for a long time, but not because we had nothing to say to you, but because our work on Earth is becoming more and more visible, and we would not like to advertise it in order not to arouse unhealthy curiosity in people far from understanding what is happening. And yet today we will lift the veil of secrecy relating to our activities on planet Earth, so that you feel our support and love. As you already know, we are your closest relatives, because our blood flows in our veins, so we never lost contact with the Earth and its inhabitants. Moreover, the most courageous souls of the Pleiadian did not just descend to Earth in physical bodies in order to fully understand and feel what is happening to you in the dual world. And of course, now, in the most crucial period for the Earth, such representatives exist on your planet. Outwardly, they look like ordinary people, but unlike you, they remember who they are and why they came to Earth. This time all the Pleiadians who are now in your incarnation, came here with a specific mission, to help you in the transition to a new dimension. There are few of them, only a few dozen, but they manage to occupy rather high key positions in various countries on different continents. Thus, geographically, we were able to cover the entire globe. Now that your Earth is entering the final, final stage of ascension, it is time for action. If before the Pleiadians in human bodies took a weight in seatitude, Realizing how few more people are willing to accept information about the transition, now that thanks to the internet information about this has become available to the widest segments of the population, they will begin to take practical steps to coordinate the actions of various countries the salvation of mankind both physically and morally. You have already seen that the scale of natural disasters is growing more and more every day. Also, the spiritual collapse of the three-dimensional world entered its final stage. Having brought to the absurdity the so-called universal human values, this world led people to a complete moral decay. We waited for everything to reach the boiling point in order to begin to act openly. Before that, all our attempts to change anything would be doomed to failure. We will not reveal the names of those mentioned in this message, because it will bring nothing but harm. And yet we wanted you to know about it, believe us and understand that we took this unprecedented step only because we are not indifferent to the fate of earthlings whom we consider our family to be in trouble and whom we consider it our duty to help everyone means available to us. We love you very much and are looking forward to meeting you, which, we believe, is just around the corner. The Pleiades Constellation Elders Council has spoken to you. On behalf of the Galactic Federation and the Spiritual Hierarchy, we greet you. We would like to assure you that we are of the light, and that we come to you in the service of your Creator to assist and advise you so that you may better understand and react to the changes which will soon be upon you and your planet. With your limited vision, and your relationship with self entedness and conflict, you may be tempted to suspect that we have come to harm or to conquer you. There are indeed forces in your universe who might have such intentions but their powers have been largely neutralized at this time. I have already assured you and gladly assure you once again that we are of the light, and that we are here for your benefit. The time has now come for a general movement upwards, a sorting of those who are ready to move up, and those who are not. Your planet is to be cleansed physically as well as on the spiritual level, for she has suffered much harm in acting as your host. It is important that you have some idea of what lies immediately ahead and why it is to take place so that you may prepare yourselves. This is our first task. You have collectively made great advances in science and technology, but in so doing, you have often neglected another important source of information, namely your intuition, in your obsession with things physical, things which can be seen, felt, measured and tested, you have gained the impression that if you cannot see or feel it, it cannot therefore exist. Your eyes are closed to any possibilities outside your own area of recognition. But I must tell you, that there is more unseen than is seen. There is more uncomprehended than comprehended. There is more to your world and your universe than you could presently imagine. The density of matter is important. Physical objects have different densities. People's physical frames have different densities. So also do worlds. We are of a lighter finer density that you, as also are the manifestations which you call spirits or ghosts. Place some pebbles in a sieve, then pour water over them and see how the finer density of water allows it to pass around, the denser pebbles. That is why ghosts can pass through walls. That is how our spacecraft can move about invisibly to your eyes. 
Though we are able to make ourselves visible to your senses at will, that is why there is so much going on around you that is invisible to your eyes. Planet Earth at present exists on the densest possible level as a reflection of the environment in which you live and conduct yourselves and the lessons you have chosen to learn. Each planet or universe or civilization has its constitution, similar in spirit and in turn to the constitutions of your more evolved governments. The concept of constitution is to lay down the outer, absolute boundaries of approved behavior beyond which neither individuals nor governments may pass. Planet Earth has been given the gift of free will, as have many others, but unlike others, your free will has been given without boundaries, thus you have been able to go to extremes of violence and self-gratification at the expense of others, extremes which in other civilizations would not be permitted. In this way you yourselves, and all of us who observe you and experience your world by correlation, can learn of the effects which such actions can set in motion, but this situation will shortly come to an end, for now is a time of sorting and of moving upwards. It is a time of revision, of assessment, of taking new paths. It includes your entire planet, and indeed a much wider circle of worlds beyond your own. Your planet is to be cleansed, and its people will move to new worlds according to their evolution and aspirations, in order to learn new lessons in new environments. This will give each individual the opportunity to review his or her life and attitudes, and to consider the kind of future to which he or she aspires. Having given you just a brief idea of what is to happen very shortly around you, I must now tell you of the task we have been given by Earth spiritual guides and hierarchy, and how we propose to set about fulfilling our responsibilities. It is our intent to use what in your language might be referred to as the carrot and the stick. The stick is not, as you might at first think, a weapon to be raised in aggression or anger or envy. This is not our way. Indeed the constitution of our lives and civilization does not permit any of these things. The stick we will use is a rod of protection, and it is strict, tolerating no exceptions. Already you will find that your weapons of war are losing their effectiveness. Over time these, physical weapons will disintegrate into dust, their aura of aggression and anger will be neutralized along with their physical form. You will also find that anything used as a weapon of aggression, even a stick or a fist raised in anger, will be stayed by an unseen hand. Ultimately, you will find that when any words are to be spoken in anger or aggression, the voice of the speaker will falter as if gently choking, so that such words may not be expressed. Finally, as the din of war is gradually stilled and a spirit of peace descends upon your planet, we hope to reinforce it with an enveloping blanket of love and goodwill. You must understand that although you may think that victory is an achievement providing its rewards, you should know that the continuance of war and competitive aggression which is a constant feature of your planet has taken its toll upon your emotions and your senses, creating a continuing tension. As this burden is progressively lifted you will find yourselves lightening, becoming more joyful, more able to see the beauty around you and the light in the souls of others. Perhaps you with your tradition of total free will, may feel that this is an unwarranted intrusion into your liberty, although you may well agree in principle that the neutralization of all anger and aggression, together with all weapons of war would be a wonderful thing, you may not feel altogether comfortable with its imposition by an alien and foreign force, yet I must tell you that such rules are not unusual. Indeed your planet is almost unique in permitting such activities, which are not within the constitutional bounds of other civilizations. Many of you may also feel that while an end to violence is a good thing in principle, it is necessary first of all to repay debts, to claim the eye for the eye, but I must tell you that such vendettas, such acts of violence followed by countervailance in the name of honor, these acts have been going on for centuries in your collective lives. Somewhere, at some time, the perpetuation of violence must stop. This is now the place and the time. I must also explain that if we are to help you, as we have been instructed to do, we must first ask you to be still. We cannot help and advise those who are too busy killing one another to listen to our words. If you could see your planet from outer space as we do all the time, you would see a murky aura of accumulated hate and aggression, and your ears would be deafened by the constant clamor and din of war, the shooting and the bombs, the cries of the wounded and the dying and the destruction of so much of the physical assets of your civilization which you have, 
previously built with expenditure of great effort and planetary resources. If only the effort you have put into destruction and rebuilding could have been directed into preserving and enhancing of building upon building. Imagine how rich your civilization would now appear, but that is your destiny and it is not for us to question it, only to point out that if you are to listen, to be informed, to improve your conduct and make a right decision when needed to do so, then you must first be stilled. Our stick will be the rod of protection, ensuring that acts of aggression are halted so that the clash of war may be stilled and the spirit of aggression, of violence and revenge may be quietened. The carrot of persuasion will take the form of suggestions as to how you may conduct your lives more peaceably, more spiritually, with the reward that in so doing you may be more ready to move to a higher level of being. It is a hope that as you pause for a moment in your aggression and counter-aggression, when your ears are no longer filled with a din of war and your senses not fully preoccupied with getting the better of others before they get the better of you, in that stillness and space of neutrality you may be persuaded to begin afresh and to build for yourselves a society where relationships are based on mutual respect, non-aggression and cooperation, on construction rather than destruction. A daunting perhaps even impossible task. No. Indeed it is much easier done than imagined, in other societies more developed than your own, there is one guiding principle of conduct between people. It is a simple rule. First, do no harm. You must start early with your very youngest children, as we also do, teaching them what is to us the most important rule of life, respect others as you would have them respect you. Think no unkind thoughts. Say no unkind words, for one only puts others down in order to make oneself feel greater. Learn to value yourself for what you are. Build upon your incarnated foundation. Develop yourself and your natural gifts, remembering only that you should enrich your own life without impoverishing that of others. Emotionally, spiritually or physically, your governments too must reform themselves rapidly. For despite the belief which many hold that they live in a democracy, in truth few people trust their governments to act competently, honestly and efficiently. The purpose of government, in the words of your Thomas Jefferson, is to prevent men from injuring one another. If only you had but one government which did just that, which ensured peace and true social justice among its people, acting productively without undue waste, with honesty and transparency, with the interests of the people, its customers, at heart, you would never believe the beneficial, almost magical effect it would have, with that one principle, there would be physical plenty for all to live challenging and rewarding lives in a pleasant environment on a respected planet. As you shed your aggressive competitiveness, competing only with ignorance to create knowledge, competing only with poverty to create wealth which all may share, conducting your collective lives according to the principle of mutual respect and cooperation, so all the dark, dank places you have created for yourselves will be changed and brightened. Those who have been put down will find new freedom to make their own contribution, and the harm done to your host planet can slowly be undone. There will be little enough time for this new spirit to take root, but if you can only pause from your aggression long enough to enjoy the stillness of peace, if you can order your collective affairs according to universal laws long enough to glimpse the rewards of peace, justice and cooperation, and if experiencing these things each of you can profit from your new environment in order to review your personal attitudes, your approach to yourself and to others, you will then be in a position to embrace a brighter future. It is our wish to remain with you and to communicate with you constantly in order to give you a wider view of that which you cannot see, of developments around you and how they will affect you, and in our behavior towards you, we will show you the creative, nurturing power of love of mutual caring and assistance which we hope that you too will embrace among yourselves. Hello my dear earthlings, my message today will be devoted to what you call Victory Day for most of you. This day symbolizes victory over the enemy, which you have been paid too dearly. And now I will tell you what is happening on this day on the thin plane of the earth. For these more than 70 years after the end of the war over the territory of Europe a separate very powerful egregore has been formed, 
which can be called the memory of the war. And each of the countries feeds its part, its own mini egregor, which over the years undergoes significant energy changes. And there are many reasons for this. As the living witnesses of the war leave the earthly plane, its memory is gradually erased. Historical facts are distorted in favor of political predilections and short-term interests of the changing leaders of various countries. As a result, these egregors of war hold in themselves the energies of such different vibrations that, in turn, are subdivided into even smaller egregors consisting of uniform energies. Unfortunately, most of them are negative. What is this energy? First of all, it is the energy of suffering, which is constantly fueled by numerous war films supporting the heat of pain and suffering at the expense of the spectator's empathy. Secondly, these are energies of aggression, anger and powerlessness to change anything. Thirdly, the energy of pride for the victory, the winners, and a sense of humiliation of those who lost. The feeling of guilt is mixed with this by the descendants of those who unleashed this bloody massacre in Europe and the pain of losing their loved ones in this war that brought them nothing but shame. Add to this the tragic fate of the people who died in the concentration camps and the days of remembrance of them. All this heavy energy load hangs over Europe not allowing people to forget about the horrors of war. And a special influx of these energies into military egregors occurs precisely in the victory days. But believe me, my beloved, these traditions artificially imposed on you, military parades, days of memory of the dead, demonstration of documentary and feature films about the war, nothing more than consciously pumping out low vibrational energies from people by those for whom they are the main source of food. Almost all the people who died in the Second World War have long been embodied in other physical bodies both on your Earth and on other planets of the galaxy. Their souls are now undergoing very different lessons, continuing their spiritual evolution and everything that they experienced during the Second World War fell into the treasury of their souls as a precious experience of living in the dual world, a sad, tragic experience, but so necessary for them at that time. Try, dear ones, to look at everything that happens through the eyes of those who have already got rid of the dualistic thinking and are able to see everything in a different light. All you can do on such days is to send all your love and gratitude to all the souls who perished in this war. And their souls will surely feel your love, wherever they are now. Today I would like to tell you about what is happening now in near-earth space and explain to you what caused my yesterday's address to you about the celebration of Victory Day. The higher forces of the universe and the Galactic Federation of Light are making unprecedented attempts to cleanse your planet of low vibrational energy so that it rises to a new energy level. For these purposes, thousands of alien ships are used equipped with special equipment capable of transforming the dark heavy energies emitted by people, especially in large cities, into light ones. With the help of these technologies we manage to dissipate, to cut, out these dense energies, not allowing them to settle in the corresponding egregors. And it is precisely in these days, when in many European countries people remember those who died in the war and undergo military parades. The strongest energy emissions of low vibration energy emanating from millions of people occur. These energies in the form of dense clouds hover over large cities, and we have to make considerable efforts to prevent them from merging with their native egregors of aggression, suffering, fear, guilt. And my address to you yesterday was dictated by the desire to combine our efforts to saving your planet. Do not make it heavy with low energies, but as much as possible ease with high vibration rarefied energies of love and gratitude. I do not create illusions and understand that only a few are able to hear me, only those whose consciousness has already gone beyond duality and who have managed to get rid of stereotypes of attitudes towards the dead, and especially those who were killed in the most ruthless way. For centuries, the knowledge of reincarnation corroded from almost all religions of the world has done its job. The deceased person is mourned. Many years have grieved for him, 
causing great harm to himself and to the one who left, forcing his soul to suffer from powerlessness and inability to reassure his loved ones left on earth and tell them about what is actually happening to them after they leave the earthly plane. It is death that made reptiloids the main tool of their energy harvest and continue to cultivate for centuries well-established methods of pumping out the energy and pain they need. And it has become especially noticeable now, when the earth itself throws off the old clothes of obsolete energies that are not able to exist in the new world of the fifth dimension. It hurts us to see that even those of you, whose souls have chosen the path of ascension, cannot completely depart from their habits and move along the groove, thereby unwittingly multiplying the evil on earth. And now I appeal to those of you who understand and wholeheartedly accept what I told you yesterday and today, to do a meditation designed to neutralize the consequences of the celebration of Victory Day. Thus, you will help us, your heavenly helpers, to anchor to the earth the pure energies of love and gratitude which are the only ones capable of dissolving all the energy distortions and distortions created by millions of people who are not aware of the true meaning of what is happening. To do this, you need to call on the Father Absolute and the Mother of the World, all of your galactic brothers and sisters, all ascended masters, angels and archangels, so that they fill you to the brim with the energy of unconditional love and then together we will dissolve the negative energies that have accumulated on earth in the result of the celebration of Victory Day. Believe me, dear ones, this joint work is able to create a miracle and help your beautiful planet easily and freely move on to the new energy space of the fifth dimension. Sincerely loving you Ashtar Sharon spoke to you.